hugely underreported story is our reliance and use of military contractors to do the work of and it's, you know, the, the government will tell you over and over again that we're pulling out of this arena war, we're pulling out of that arena war, but what, what do we, um, have, because we pulled out the military doesn't necessarily mean that we pulled out the contractors. And the contractors are doing our bidding, or maybe they're not, maybe they're just working for their corporate boards and working as a, um, for profit. You know, so that's a huge underreported story. Water, for example, Blackwater, uh, which was, I think, called also Blackwater USA, um, is a military contractor. The United States has hired Blackwater for many, many, many years, as have other places and other organizations and other countries. Uh, they were high, heavily involved in, um, in Pakistan, doing, um, doing work in Pakistan. And they were doing uh, security work in Iraq and um, employees from the Blackwater Corporation were responsible for this thing called the Nisar Square Massacre in 2007. Sometimes it's called the Blackwater Massacre. It was in all the papers. The case was, uh, there was a, a civil case brought before the US courts on behalf of the victims and the victims' families. But the Blackwater Corporation changed its name and it still has multi hundreds of billion, hundreds of million of dollar contracts with the United States uh, Department of Defense. We rely on them. We don't have a huge, we don't have as large a standing army as we have um, need to deploy people or suppose that I don't think actually we you know, have the needs that we cite. I mean, that was, you know, these stories come and go so quickly. I mean, one of the, one of the, I, there's so many underreported stories. I mean, a huge underreported story is how we have allowed the United States to have an extremely uneducated um, body politic, you know, and, and that, you know, people are, people are extremely uneducated about what, what their government does and how to find out what their government does and how to not, you know, how to, how to automatically not accept what they're being told as a truth. And, and one particular story was the, um, the Nisar Square massacre. There were um, 18 people killed, 18 Iraqis killed in Nisar Square, and there were um, scores of, of other victims who were shot but not killed. And I went over with a law firm to uh, Istanbul, Turkey, to um, sit in on interviews with these uh, victims and victims' family members. And, um, you know, the kind of chaos that was described on this one morning in 2007 when four uh, Humvees filled with employees from the Blackwater Corporation came into an enormous traffic circle and started shooting at people. Um, and it was, it was kind of an amazing set of interviews because we, we actually, the first person that we interviewed was a traffic guard who was at one particular uh, street entrance in Tunisia Square. And he told about how um, when the Humvees came into the square, as was the custom of uh, military people, they would shoot rifles up into the air and all the traffic guards knew that they were to block off the square until the um, group of the caravans or whatever, what do we call them? the convoy went through the square. And in this particular morning, they heard the rifle shots and he was standing at a corner and so he stopped traffic and in front of him was a white sedan in which there was a young Iraqi man and an older Iraqi woman. And um, he looked over to the sedan and he noticed that the man had been shot and was slumped over the wheel. So he went over to the, the car and he saw the, the woman in the car was screaming, my son, my son, my son, and he was, the police, the traffic officer was trying to tell her that the, her son was killed and she should get out of the car and that there was shooting going on and because he was killed he was no longer able to apply the brakes and so the car started to roll forward and um, at that point the Blackwater um, employees started shooting at the car and the car exploded and the woman died in the explosion and were, were completely burnt and um, it turns out, um, and the, the guy finished up his testimony saying he was he ran to shelter behind a building, and then there was all this chaos, and then you know kind of cleared, and he went back to the car, and the woman and the son were both killed. And um, it turned out that the second person that we interviewed was a doctor who grew up in Baghdad, going to English language schools, and his wife was also a doctor, and also spoke English, and they had a son in med school 
and they had, I think, two other children, and um, he was the husband of the woman that was killed and the father of the guy that was killed. And because there were, in 2007, lots of um, kidnappings in Baghdad um, for a variety of reasons, it was the middle of the Civil War, the, um, the father had told his family that none of the women in the family, his daughters and his, his wife, I think he had one daughter, maybe had two, were not to be in a car on their own. And so the wife had this habit, or had this, you know, would come home for lunch, and so the, the son left med school, went to pick his mother up, they were driving home through the square, and then they were both killed. And we interviewed him about six or seven weeks after the incident, and the guy was completely distraught, completely blamed himself, and blamed everybody else, and was very angry about it. But, um, you know, these weren't terrorists, these were people on their way home from lunch. And so the story of the war, which is so, you know, if you go back to the initial question, which was what stories aren't told, I mean, the stories of wars are never told in the human costs of the war. So you, you can talk all you want about getting rid of Saddam or talk all you want about democracy in the Middle East, but the truth is, is that families in their day-to-day -day lives are being destroyed through these wars.